I always had like these markers where I'm like, all right, I'm kind of like mentally sprinting to this point, be it a number like, you know, initially like something like 10 grand a month for, for my business, you know, back in the day or, you know, these uh, maybe the kind of house I wanted to live in or the car I wanted to drive or the thing. And then all of a sudden you get to the point where you have all the things, you know, I feel like I have everything I need, but you know, like now I'm just finding the happiness within those things and optimizing, you know, what I got. This is an intro. Intro, intro, intro. Hustle and flow chart with your boy, my boy, Matt Wolf, and Joe Fear. Hey. Hey. Hi. Welcome back. I've been here. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> Funny to see you again here. Yeah. And you listening to us or watching us. Hey. Hi. How you doing? Welcome back. Good to or, have you. Or oh. welcome for the first time, maybe. Yeah. Thanks for being here. It's great to have you either way. Yeah. Feels like family here. It does. It always has. Yeah. Well, there right. was that one time. Just it like didn't. the Olive Garden. <laughs> when you're here, you're family. Oh, yeah. Wow. They're not a sponsor. They should be. I want those breadsticks, and there's not one that far from us. It's yeah. down the street. That's true. Oh, that's a great idea. Why haven't we thought of that place for lunch? I don't know, actually. I know Olive Garden, like, never is on my radar. <laughs> Why should it be? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the breadsticks. <laughs> the anyway. salad. The endless everything. The endless everything, yeah. Mm. But Still, to, not a sponsor. Not a today sponsor. Today, we're going to drop some endless knowledge, maybe. <laughs> or, it's, you know. It's timeless, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> Isn't that what everybody says about financial stuff or financial? This is timeless advice. This is a... Yeah. Well, there's... Well, We'll break some myths, maybe, uh, with what we've we've learned in a in a book that Matt and I have obsessed over a bit. Mm-hmm. I would say Matt more than I. It's the mm-hmm. best book ever. You said it's it's uh, it, up there, top ten ever, ever. T- one of my top ten. It's up there. No, it's a paradigm shifter. It's yeah. a good one. It's the psychology of money by Morgan Housel. Housel, Housel. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. That's the one. So, so t- yeah, lead us off, Matt. What are we doing here? So today we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start off this episode by talking about some of our insights and ahas, and just kind of having some discussions that were sparked by this book. So um, that's where we're gonna go with this episode. We are gonna take notes on this thing. Uh, this could lead anywhere. We might start talking about the psychology of money, and it goes off in completely different tangents as we've as uh, been known to do. <laughs> so make sure you grab the notes because there's gonna be a lot of good stuff. I'm, I'm assuming in this there's, episode, there guarantee we always make sure there are good stuffs in every note package that we give you. So yes. at flowchartgroup.com, flowchartgroup.com is where you want to go and type in your email address when you see the option to. It's a, fl- it's a Facebook group as well. That will get you into the notes. You have to be two weeks at the time of this recording dropping that you'll uh, have the ability to get them for free. So flowchartgroup.com. Yes, go and there. We also have a lovely sponsor. This we episode do. is sponsored by our friends. And here they are. Hey, I want to tell you about something. What's that? Dude, Ahrefs, you know yeah. the tool we've talked about forever because we use it yeah. a lot in yeah. our business? Uh-huh. They have a free version now. No way. Wow. They do. No wow. Yes, it's called Ahrefs Webmaster Tools. Wait, wait, wait. Is it's this legit. A- okay, hold on. Let me... Nice, nice, nice fake typing. Um, oh, oh, I went to hrefs.com slash awt. That was, I went to hrefs.com, and you should too, hrefs.com slash awt. There's an A before all A-H-R-E-F-S that. A-H-R-E-F-S dot com slash awt. Yeah, so we said it about, you know, a hundred times, so now it's subconsciously in your brain. Um, so I went there, and this is blowing my mind, Matt. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the page right now. It monitors the SEO health. I mean, tell me more, Matt. Why is this important? Why should I? Well, it monitors the <laughs> SEO health. It monitors all the backlinks and no. uh, all the domain and page level SEO metrics and all of your search traffic and keywords and what keywords you're showing up for. And it does it for free. And like we use the paid HRFs, but this is awesome. You know, I was just kidding over here. I was just uh, having fun. No, you no I wasn't really real typing, right? You, you don't. You knew that? No. I don't really type. Yeah. I can also see you. Yeah. <laughs> okay in all reality this is a freaking cool tool um we we were nerding out about it when we heard that hrs was coming back for a sponsorship mm-hmm. because it's a free tool no credit card required and yeah you get a lot of key things that the bigger hrs tool has in it that this one basically has like all the key things that every person with a website should have this so that is you listening. that is you listening so yes improve your website's seo performance for free just go to hrs.com slash awt there they were 
<laughs> They're great friends of ours. <laughs> ah, we appreciate them very much. Okay. Yes, we do. So this episode, we've uh, we talked about the book. Mm-hmm. Psychology of Money is a book that we you found. How did you find this book? Um, it actually popped up on a couple YouTube videos. So first off, I saw uh, Noah Kagan yes. mention it. Uh, I, I don't remember if it was on a YouTube video or if it was in one of his podcasts that I listened to. I think I heard him mention it on one of his podcasts. And then another YouTube channel uh, that I watch, Ali Abdal, mm-hmm. he he recommended it. Like he had a video that was like my top 10 books I've read in 2021 or something like that. And one of them was this book. And uh, it looked really there. good. And, and I went and picked yeah. it up and I blew through it. So I, I read it in probably a three day stretch. Mm. Uh, but, you know, sit, sitting down reading for like an hour at a time for three or four days and just cranked through this book. Yeah, man. So you, yeah, you almost immediately were like giving me little, all your aha moments. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them really did come at the beginning of the book, too, because I ended up reading the book shortly after. Mm-hmm. And you were saying, yeah, right there with Rich Dad, Poor Dad in the book that basically helped kick us off into business and thinking differently. He said this book is like right there with it, Mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, they're kind of different, but also they share a lot of similarities. Yeah. Well, I think, I think one of the big ideas in this book was the, the idea that the pursuit of the money is not really the thing, Mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm trying to think of how to word it without just like going straight to the book and like reading quotes. <laughs> what are you um, trying? Yeah, well, well, but the big it? idea of the book, I mean, you read it, right? I did. So what's the big idea of the book in your mind? It's uh, happiness yeah, it's, more than anything and enjoying your journey, optimizing, but being consistent. There's a lot of nuggets in, because I, I have some notes as well. I know we have a bunch of highlights here, mm-hmm. but I would say overall is, is, uh, really figuring out what is your ideal life and, and finding the happiness in that that path that you choose mm-hmm. and money there's there's specific ways to approach money to use that as a vehicle or a tool to get you to that happiness that you choose and it's a lot easier than a lot of people make it out to be mm-hmm. and it's consistency it's creating nice systems and um not moving the goalposts like basically mm-hmm. like figuring out how to get your ego in check and you know that so a lot of that is mindset it's like having a balanced life mm-hmm. something that's kind of it's just uh you know it feels like you got everything you need or that you ever want mm-hmm. or you have the ability to you have access to anything you want within you know what you've created for yourself at least that's my takeaway because like that's how i would apply it to my life is uh it's going for happiness and enjoying the journey yeah and i, I think a big piece of it is also just like figure out how to be happy with what you have so you you mm-hmm. don't really want for other stuff so cuz a lot of people they they want to make more money make more money make more money because they want more stuff they want bigger houses they want bigger yep. better nicer the cars thing. and yeah. there's always this sort of lifestyle creep element where yeah. once lifestyle you get that there's always term. another there's always like another milestone that you want to shoot for so there's always mm-hmm. something after the thing that you just got you're always trying to like chase something new where if you can figure out how to go you know what I'm pretty damn happy with what I got. I like my house. I like my cars. I like the stuff I got. There's not a whole lot that I need to add into the mix right now. I'm pretty happy. Yeah. You still try to grow your income. You still go and invest and you still, you know, work to, to grow your income. But if you're happy with where you're at now, that the additional money that you weren't making before starts to, to pile and become that yeah. safety net that's available for you whenever you need it. Mm. That, and see that really, that was the thing that hit home for me the most is, is figuring out how to move the goal, uh, stop moving the goal post. Mm-hmm. Um, it, we had a chat maybe, I don't know how long ago it was now, but I, I was telling you about part of the book I read. It was towards the end, I believe where it kind of sank in because I feel like that's a common thing during the book is this concept of, of getting your, just your ego or your desires in check a little bit where it's, uh, you know, stop moving the goalpost. Meaning, do you really need to get another house because you've like, you felt like you've kind of maxed this one out in terms of like, ah, you know, I want something a little bigger Mm -hmm. or I see my buddy just, uh, you know, did really well with his business or something. And, um, you know, like he got that house or that new car. It's like, I bet I can, yeah, I want to do that, you Mm -hmm. know? And then you just kind of keep pushing yourself. And that hit home with me because I feel like that was my internal, I always had like these markers where I'm like, all right, I'm kind of like mentally sprinting to this point, be it a number like, you know, initially like something like 10 grand a month for, for my business, you know, back Mm -hmm. in the day, or, you know, these, uh, maybe the kind of house I wanted to live in or the car I wanted to drive or the thing. And then all of a sudden you 
get to the point where you have all the things you know i feel like i have everything i need but you know like now i'm just finding the happiness within those things and optimizing you know what i got Mm -hmm. and and to this book's point um basically talks about like saving like a madman mm-hmm. or a mad woman and using vehicles like index funds and you know uh, all these long-term investment vehicles that you can then just compound your way into wealth while you're you know optimizing what you got right now mm. but yeah moving the goalpost thing i think that like the the perspective or that that shift allowed me to kind of just chill out a little bit mm-hmm. and um, feel like wait hold on I don't need more you know because it almost um, I'm trying to remember how I mean we had this conversation because you know what it was I was thinking through this exercise with um, Angelo and Alpha Hippie you mm-hmm. know and and uh it was like future pacing so i was looking out like 20 years that's what it was and i found myself still living in the same place and i was Mm -hmm. like that's interesting Mm -hmm. how would i be and before that like up until just last week i wasn't thinking that way Mm -hmm. you know i was thinking like oh now i'm probably gonna get another place in the next like few years Mm -hmm. you know it's like on to the next place because i've always bounced bounced to another few years at a new location so Mm -hmm. that was my goal post yeah. And I feel like that was like a lot of my drive in business. And it's like, okay, well, I need to make more to so I can afford that bigger place with more yard or a, a pool or something, you know? Yeah. And, and like a big piece of it is you got to step back and you got to look at the motivations for wanting a lot of that stuff, right? Like some of the examples that they used in, in this specific book was like when when a, the, you see a Ferrari d- driving down the street, like people, people strive to get like these supercars and stuff, right? And we have friends that have supercars mm-hmm. and I actually think they're really cool, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I've never really had a huge desire to, own one but you see these these people driving in the supercars and most people don't look at the person in the supercar and go man that person's really cool i respect them because they got that car or you know like i i, I like, want to know their story <laughs> like look at that person that that person's amazing people buy those cars thinking that others will look at them and mm-hmm. go i want to be like that person He's cool right but what really happens is when you see somebody in that car you're like I wish I had that car. Mm-hmm. You're not sitting there going, that person worked hard and is awesome because they got that car. That is so cool that they managed to do that. You're sitting there going, screw that guy. That should be me in that car. Yeah, right? Like I, That's what I, I most saw, people think when they see those cars driving around. I saw some like crazy car the other day in my neighborhood. And it was like, uh, I did because it was after I read that part of the book, or, or that's kind of throughout the book too. It's kind mm-hmm. of like another concept, like a recurring thing. And um, <laughs> I caught myself in that position though like looking at this car going like ooh mm-hmm. and but it wasn't about the person yeah like i took a quick look at like i just always like to see the person behind a wheel something but i was like i really want to just drive that thing around the block or just like you know yeah. give it a shot and see what it's like it wasn't like yeah i want to embody that person in that but no yeah, yeah. no like we we or have respect for that person it doesn't no yeah. So we've got like, we've got friends who, you know, they've, they've got supercars and they've got the car and they're like, you know, I love the engineering. I know what went into the car. I know like all of the mechanics of how it works and I love taking it to the track and I yeah. love trying to beat my times. And yeah, yeah. like, they have this very like intentional reason that they always wanted this car and they got it and they use it in that way. And then we also know people that are like, man, if I get that car, I'm going to get all the ladies or like all the guys are going to want to be me and all the girls are going to want to be with me. Right. Like people think that that's the reality, but that's not really the reality. Now there's, I'm not saying it's bad to want those things. Like the first example, I think that's a, you know, a great reason to invest that if you've got the money and it makes sense and cool. But the people that are doing it because they want others respect, like it's motivation. That's all it is in the book. But yeah, it's, it's, is it, it's happiness too it's like what's happy to like what does that truly make you happy then shoot whatever man Mm -hmm. maybe that that fulfills your own happiness is trying to look cool to other people and that just somehow makes you look happy or feel happy then eh, good on you matt you can uh (laughs) that's not you for sure but so that's a i would say that was a that was a big one one of the I don't know. There's a lot of aha moments as I look at my notes right yeah, here. Yeah, just pull one out and let's just riff on it. Uh, I mean, from chapter one, let's see here. It just showed that, and I've heard this from a lot of parts, but like not a lot of people have uh, really good money skills or saving habits, which mm-hmm. is like a big part of this book. So it, it said basically most Americans can't come up with 400 bucks from their savings to cover unexpected expenses. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, man, that's that's wild. And uh, you know, I think it was saying, you know, obviously more of the business minded folks or 
people thinking about this, I'm sure it doesn't include them, you know, but me, I'm sure it could very I know, readily. I know business so. owners that are living, of course, you know, I've m- been there week to week, month to month. Yeah, I've been there. I know you've been there too. Mm-hmm. So, it, but it's when I read that, I was like, wow, damn, that's like no buffer because you think of the uh, pandemic and, you know, the ripple effects that still have come from that rising prices in a bunch of spots. Uh, that's pretty crazy if like people are, you know, if that's, if that's it. And because basically the book makes a point that everyone has the ability to save. Yeah. If you have the right psychology around how money works and the, the use of it as like a vehicle to get what you want out of life Mm -hmm. now or in the future. Yeah. No, I mean, how many people do you, I I mean, to me, that's, that's not that shocking to me. That's like, yeah, I don't, I don't think most people have much money set aside for a rainy yeah. day. Like, I, yeah. I, I know a lot of people personally, you know a lot of the same people who constantly talk about how they, they don't have money to do stuff, True. yet they own a boat and a dune buggy and a motor home and, like, you know, like, they own all of these toys, but mm-hmm. they're constantly complaining about how they have no money to do anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, you know. And that's being rich, right? <laughs> like, so the book was also saying that there's a difference between rich and wealth. Mm-hmm. Wealth is when you have those savings and it also has wealth of time and freedom and happiness and all that, you know, it can come in many forms, but yeah, rich, it was saying are like the, the boats, the supercars, mm-hmm. you know, the extravagant houses and things that just look like, I mean, it doesn't matter it, like, because it, it proves the point that, yeah, you got to pay the bills of those things. So you're obviously making bank mm-hmm. <laughs> to afford that thing. You're not like homeless, yeah. with, like, come on, like you have an ability to get there, but is that but it, do you really have a lifestyle still outside of those things yeah no they suffer Happiness. from the the lifestyle creep kind of thing where as they make more money they figure out what more expenses can i add into my life to you know fill the new gap that i created mm-hmm. right so like they just that's that's the lifestyle creep element and i've i've definitely been there but now i, I kind of feel like i've gotten to a place where i've sort of stopped that momentum <laughs> like i'm in the house i want i don't really desire a new car i like the cars we got like we're kind of we're we're good we're yeah. like i'm i'm sort of stopped that train now while still trying to increase the income and sure. invest and make more money but that train of like finding new expenses has stopped for me yeah yeah and this my combination of reading this book you know and mainly the few chapters the first ones is where it set in and then thinking of like my future going through this legacy thing uh like writing out how will i want to be remembered it wasn't like you know part of mine was living you had in, a sweet ferrari i mean that's maybe mm-hmm. that's what's going to be on your headstone i have a sweet ferrari yeah, yeah. had a sweet ferrari had a sweet one yeah it'll be just a big ferrari yeah. i'll be inside of it yeah the tomb ferrari tomb yeah <laughs> <laughs> so cool <laughs> not sponsored by ferrari but we'll gladly accept a trade yeah do you want one too, Matt? Yeah, two. No, two. no, no. Matt, give him like the lowest possible model. Um, I mean, it's still a badass car, Matt. Come on. Why? Don't complain. Because you're throwing me in. I'm the dead guy here. I'm the one that needs to get buried with a Ferrari on my tombstone okay. to be remembered in this light. Fine. If this theoretical situation trade. where Ferrari goes and gives us two Ferraris so that we can sponsor, they can Ferrari, sponsor us. I'm looking at you. Then fine. You can. I'll take the older of the models. <laughs> Come on. It's a good deal. It's a, a good lot deal. of times the older models are more valuable. <laughs> mm. okay right. we'll approach that bridge once we get there <laughs> in our cool ferraris <laughs> all right there should be cool sound effects in there somewhere <laughs> there they were that's that, it that was them <laughs> now, now now jacob's just gonna put that in the rest of the episode he's gonna clip out the joke like rum rum and then just like th- that wasn't me that was the sound effect you have no proof that was me none okay all right so um i gave you some uh, where were we <laughs> Ferraris, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Legacy, just how how you want to be remembered, how I want to be remembered. It was like having a good time and um, not basically trying to stress myself out, sprinting to another goal all the time. Mm-hmm. I think. Oh, that was the other thing in the book. The guy chose, and he's thirty six years old. The author of the book, Morgan mm-hmm. Heisel. 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 Yeah. I don't know how it's pronounced. Heisel. I think it's Heisel. <laughs> Heisel. Um, he's 36, so that's how old I am. Mm-hmm. You're a couple of years older. You're geriatric. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I I was like, okay, this is interesting because it's kind of like a time of my, you know, it's the same seasons of life that we're in. Mm-hmm. And he chose to pay off his house as like his thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, his thing was like, I don't want the, the, I just want the freedom of getting rid of that thing completely. 
and not worrying about it because I got my thing. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's not the best financial advice he was saying, but he's like, I'm I'm going for freedom. You know, I'm going for happiness. So it's like one less mental thing to, mm -hmm. you know, put on on your radar that you like almost have to cover every month. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I think it was just like it was freeing my mind of a lot of things where I was like, you know what? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> like, what's the point of doing extra stuff and doing all these crazy things if I got what I want, but I can optimize the crap out of it, and then also at the same time build for the future mm -hmm. um, using a bunch of other stuff? But it's not like a how to make money book. Yeah. You've no, been very not, quiet though. Yeah, Sorry, talking a lot here. Yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, well, <laughs> why don't why don't we grab another like aha from like chapter two and uh, and mm -hmm. and chat about that because I think uh, we we've beaten the horse to death of the. You don't let your lifestyle get away from you. Yes. We beat it to death. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> it is horse. now just a puddle. Ew. A, a puddle of bones and guts. And... Wow. Okay. Ugh. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, I, I oh, okay. Risk and, or sorry, luck and risk. So, the two factors that basically a result can come from. And, I mean, I don't have word for word here, but essentially it was making the point of, a lot of people will analyze their results based off of something they did, like an action. Mm -hmm. And that's usually, um, where the heck is it? It's, there's like a risk factor to an action. Typically you kind of can predict more or less your risk tolerance, you know, going into something and you're, you feel something that's like, you know, it's your ability of doing stuff, but they say luck is like a whole different factor that you can't really quantify, mm -hmm. can't really measure, but sure as hell plays into things like, you know, just meeting someone at a, at a, a lunch or something, you know, like a business lunch, some event that you go and you're hanging at the bar and someone's ordering a drink right next to you mm -hmm. and you strike up a conversation and it turns into like your next cool affiliate partner or something, mm -hmm. you know, you can make a lot of money together. That was, was that little luck? Yeah, maybe not completely because you're at the same event, the same people, but like the fact that you're right there and yeah. Well, there, I don't know. There's a lot of other factors there you can't really quantify. Yeah, like there, there's an example with Bill Gates in the book of how like people look at someone like Bill Gates and want to kind of mm -hmm. model him and follow in his footsteps, right? If Bill Gates can do it, then I can do it. All I got to do is do the same things that he did, right? Like they think that if they just follow those footsteps and follow some sort of process, it'll happen, right? But when someone like Bill Gates, Bill Gates grew, like was born and grew up in a town, and I don't remember the stats, so some of this I'm just kind of making up because I don't remember it exactly, but he grew up in a town that only had like one high school that had a computer in it, and he happened to get into this school and be one of like 20 kids that had access to this computer yeah. in this school, and he learned how to program at this school on this one computer that was like the only computer like in the country, yeah. And, you know, how lucky was he to be born to that family in that town and get to go to that high school and have that opportunity? How can anybody sort of model that? Like, that's a piece of his story that nobody else is going to be able to recreate. For sure. You know, that's and that was so much so many factors that you can't even quantify. Mm -hmm. And that's that was a big kind of an aha moment when you're studying. It says like when studying performance and figuring out what to do next. Mm -hmm. It's it's basically impossible to quantify luck. Yeah, and most people study history, right? Mm -hmm. Like that was a big piece that they were talking about too is that, you know, a lot of people look at history of what what has happened before as an indicator of what to expect for the future, but mm -hmm. like we're literally always in an uncharted territory. Like every day oh, yeah. is new uncharted territory. Yeah. So like trying to predict when the stock market is going to fall or when the real estate bubble is going to burst or any of that kind of stuff, like trying to predict that that you're you're just guessing like everybody else mm -hmm. because the scenario that we're in right now today has like the the set it's of circumstances like has yeah. never happened. Yeah. You know, last time there was a a, a crash, there was like um, the internet wasn't as prolific there was uh, different completely different tech that everybody was using there was mm -hmm. there was all sorts of other elements going on in the world so many other variables that happened at that time that made that last bubble happen like the housing bubble that crashed last time mm -hmm. it was because of a whole bunch of bad loans that people wouldn't be able to afford well they stopped giving those loans away so it's not the same scenario as last time right mm. like there's so many things that are different now so how anybody can predict based on the history of things it's you know it's still just to guess like yep. you can look at history and go okay this could happen again and sort of prepare for it but like 
any prediction of what's actually going to happen is just that a prediction it is and and that relates to the whole idea of not studying a single person and like their their journey like you know like bill gates yeah exactly like studying him and him only and then modeling trying to model your life or your business around the way that he's done things Mm -hmm. you know instead this book argues that you want to study things in broad strokes and look at trends and data and and bigger sets of data Mm -hmm. so you can then study more or less like angle yourself in the direction of where you want to trend (laughs) but you can't you know like you're never going to know but because everyone has their own factors and you know their past and their luck that that follows them around life and their journey so yeah it's like study don't just study a single person have have broad strokes with pretty much everything and uh it, it yeah, I think that's just kind of cool because it almost takes the pressure off a little bit more as well. Mm-hmm. And I, that's what I feel like this book did a lot of is like take the pressure off of a lot of uh, maybe common things that that just shouldn't be like mm-hmm. a mental loop or a desire of people when it comes with money mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or effort into going like work or whatever it is like that. Yeah, yeah. And like any sort of... Uh stress that you have over money any sort of anxiety you get over money it's a pretty universal thing right it's yeah. it's, it's you're not crazy right i think like the, that's like the thing that's <laughs> in the so. very first chapter like one of the first sentences in the book is something like you're not crazy because this is the type of stuff that everybody sort of stresses out over yeah, yeah. when it comes to money so you know just realize that if you are struggling financially or you you can't wrap your head around finances or you have a hard time feeling abundant and all of that kind of stuff, like you're not alone. That's kind of how everybody feels everybody. about money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's always like some factor. Yeah. Like it might not be so obvious looking. Yeah. And, and still the rich person, the one with the supercars and all that stuff doesn't mean, you know, they could be completely wealthy as well, mm-hmm. but you know, maybe on the outside, these people just have the car, but like, because I look around this, actually, now that I've like read the book, I think about this and like as I'm driving around and I'll look for kind of nicer cars and not so nice areas. And I know it's kind of maybe a judging thing a little <laughs> bit, but at the same time, I'm kind of just like, well, it's interesting. It shows where maybe the money is put a little bit. Yeah. And I'm maybe the person's visiting. I don't know. I'm, but I'm like, I literally, I'm like looking out and I'm like, huh, interesting, because you can yeah. see the inconsistencies because it's they're all around us is yeah. <laughs> the masses are kind of to a different tune financially. Yeah. Well, how many broke ass people do you know <laughs> that have like barely any money but an iPhone? Oh, prime example. <laughs> Good point, Matt. Yeah, you, you know, should have a flip phone and earn some cash. Come like, on. I know people that are unemployed or save and some like cash. live with their parents, but they have a MacBook Pro. You know, like <laughs> yeah. I mean, you better be using that thing as a tool yeah. to do something that's going to create more value and like pay for itself at least. Yeah, it's crazy. No, but I I, I do a lot of the the same thing. Like I've, I'm I'm constantly judging but not like i don't know the people so it's not a judge on no it's the person no it's just kind of like person. observations it's kind of like interesting that That's there's it. that house with that car that it doesn't fit like like n- n- no and we are just yeah it's obviously a complete you know, we have no truth behind this whole thing, but it's it's observations. I think that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, it's like interesting. That's out of place seeming. Yeah, <laughs> and then moving on. You know, it's just noted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's all it is. Yeah. No, yeah. it's it's interesting. So, I'm curious. Yeah. From from reading the book, what what sort of things do you like? What sort of tweaks do you feel like you'll be making? based on like some of the stuff you've read maybe like mindset or even like actual like changes you're gonna make you know mm-hmm. um hmm. a, a big thing has been releasing my mind to it's almost like the anxiety part of me mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's not around money specifically it's more around the things that would create the money Mm-hmm. and create the the lifestyle or support the lifestyle i guess that i want and i have and that i want but it's more of the things i have and um, you even mentioned this the other day is mm-hmm. the fear of losing what we have mm-hmm. i think is i think that's one of the most common things actually once you like reach a point of like where you feel like you 
kind yeah. of made the 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 stability of your life. I do. There's like a, a like almost like this tipping point where for it's a fear of loss. A so. big portion of our life, we're trying to get more, get more, go bigger. Yeah. I wanted the bigger house, the better cars, the newer cars, the newer computers, the newer equipment, the newer, the better, the you know all yep. the yep. all the latest greatest stuff. And then it kind of got to this tipping point, and I think it was around the time I um, I had. We I, we started our family right. Yeah. Um, when we started our family, we wanted not, to move. Not me and you in a family like that. No, no. not not our family. <laughs> no. Me and my wife decided to fi- yes, start a yes. family and have kids. Clarification for the <laughs> notes because Alana is reading. <laughs> we wanted to we wanted to move back to to San Diego to be closer to my family and her family. Um, but once we got the house that we're in now, we were kind of like. I think we're good. Like, yeah. I don't want a bigger house. I'm good with the cars we got. I'm good with what we've got, right? I I feel like there is that tipping point where you want more, 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 more. And now you're like, I don't want to lose what I got. I don't want to exactly. lose what I got. I don't want to lose what I got. And I think I've sort of passed this threshold of now I'm more concerned about losing what I have than I am about figuring out how to get yeah. more. I think in I, now I think I've arrived to that point. Or maybe I don't know what point I've arrived at, but I I completely I completely understand that, and I think that is like the most common thing mm-hmm. from people who like maybe have won it big, like you know made a bunch of money, is the fear of losing it. Yep. But obviously, if you, yeah, a lot of people do mm-hmm. unfortunately. But it's also yeah success like this, like oh my god, I'm now used to this lifestyle. I don't want to give it up, mm-hmm. and um, I want to give it to my kids, you know. And if you have kids, and pass it on, yeah, or at least the idea of that this is possible. You can work, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I I think for me the book has really sort of, you know. I hadn't realized that since until I read the book. Like yeah. reading through the book, I think gave me that realization that I, I feel like I've gotten to a point where I've, I've really toned down the desire for things. Right? I've toned down yeah. the desire to have, and even when I like see cool gadgets and stuff, like I used to be a little more impulsive, where I'd see like this cool drone and I'd be like, I need that Amazon by now, uh-huh. right? Like, but now what I'll do is I'll be like, that's really cool. I'll put it on my Amazon wish list. Come back in like a week and see if I still want it. A week later, I'm like. Meh. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll leave it on there because I might want it uh, next week, but I'll see. You kind of keep skitting, you know, pushing the puck and I, out and a little I bit. Push further. it out, push it push out, push it out. out. Next yeah. thing you know, I've pushed it out like three years, and it's an old model. And I'm like, I don't really want that drone anymore anyway, and I delete it off my wish list. <laughs> Things a piece of crap. Get it. Right? Like, <laughs> it's not something I did methodically, but it's something that I've realized I do. It's good. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's good. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's. I think doing stuff like that, it's almost like. You get the gratification of purchasing something yeah. by just adding it to like your wish list on Amazon. Ooh, interesting. That's a cool little takeaway, right? Little... Yeah, like I, 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 like I, I feel that. Like you, you find it on Amazon. You go, oh, this is cool. This is the thing I wanted. I'll put it on my wish list, right? Maybe when Christmas or a birthday comes around, somebody in your family will see it and get it for you. Cool. Dude. But if 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 they don't, <laughs> you still have that thing of like, oh, one time I wanted this, and then every once in a while you check back. Do I still want it? You know what? I do really want it. Screw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this. it's been a month and I still want it. Let's go ahead and order it's it. pretty right? good. Let's yeah, spoil it's... ourselves. But for the most part, most things that I add, I'm just kind of like, eh, eh, eh. And then I take it off my list after a few weeks, you I like know? It. I like it. It's cool. Yeah. The little pressure release. Of, like the gratification. I yeah. almost purchased it. I feel like, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm no scientist. It's pretty good, man. But I do feel like you get the same sort of release by adding something to a wish list as you would like adding it to cart. You know, Dr. Wolf... I would uh, uh, subscribe to that prescription for giving out. Subscribe to that prescription. Okay, thank prescribe, you. Subscribe, subscribe to the prescription okay. that you're giving okay. of this doctoral advice. Twelve ninety nine a month. Wow. It's good. It's good. Good advice. Mm-hmm. It's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, budget. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think you're right. Because the little dopamine release, that's what it is. It's mm-hmm. dopamine. A little dopamine Click. release. Yeah. Well, you've been like a monster on a wish list things on Amazon forever now. I know that. Like, yeah. That's I, more of like my family's influence. I actually don't think to <laughs> add like stuff that I want as like a gift yeah. to the wish list. Um, so like a lot of times I'll be putting stuff like boxes of pens or like uh, like a new <laughs> notepad. <wants> great gifts. <laughs> or like some post-it notes or something like that. And they'll be like on an Amazon wish list. Because I'm like, yeah, I'm going to make an Amazon order like on Wednesday. So like throw it on my wish list. Yeah. So I remember that I want it, right? And then like a birthday, I'll roll around and somebody will give me like a pad of sticky notes. And I'm like, thanks. You know, it's but- on your wish list. <laughs> so I never, I never really saw it as like the, the gift thing. But like now every time around like Christmas and, and uh, birthdays <laughs> and stuff like that, my wife will be like, my mom wanted me to ask you to update your wish list. And I'm like, okay. And then I'll go and add like some, you know, little 10 
dollar items to my wish list yeah. so people have gift ideas <laughs> damn it's a bummer that you're like thinking you're like knowing people are looking at this where mm. you're just like you should just load it up with like you can make I private lists too though i know i know i know because that's that's, that's what i started doing that's what i use yeah <laughs> i'm yeah. surprised you weren't doing that but, yeah but no i'm just like you should just be adding crazy things on there you never know what's gonna happen man maybe mm-hmm. Maybe one of your aunts or your your mother in law just hit it big, and they're feeling feel Matt needs this yeah. whatever fancy pants drone. Yeah. Well, typically what I'll do is create I create B roll private- for the hustle and fluid chart show. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Come on. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> usually I, usually I do add it to like a private list, and then okay, from the from the private li- like when somebody says like, hey, it's coming up on Christmas or whatever, you should probably update your wish list. I just go look at my private list and go, yeah, that would make a gift. That could make a gift. That could make a gift. Smart. Okay. It's, it's almost, yeah. It's almost always books. But. So we beat that horse to death, Matt. Yeah. We did beat it to death. What? Did, what? What was <laughs> the horse dopamine, we just bet, bet, beat it? The dopamine release of going to Amazon and buying crap that you probably don't need. Mm-hmm. Basically stopping the goal post moving forward, but it was other. Stuff. I think it was just like, I don't know. It was going back to the things, right? Like, mm. buy, you were saying you used to buy a bunch of stuff on Amazon. That's yeah. What it was. Well, I mean, I would just order gadgets. Like, I like, yeah, it was all the latest, but, latest and greatest. Like That's Josh Bartlett's saying. always on top of the tech, so I'd get yeah. on a call with him, and he'd be like, "Oh, I got the latest Kodak ZI8." And I'm like, "Oh, that's cool." And I get Zed. on Amazon while I'm talking to him, and I'd be like, "I just ordered one too." That yeah. was like a very keeping up with the Joneses kind of thing. Yeah, uh, there was also the I know I was always guilty of the Tim Ferriss Five Bullet Friday like gadgets that were mentioned. It would always mm. be like the latest whatever like cre- like um mixes cream, or whatever yeah, yeah. butt cream like, <laughs> tim ferris says it's good all right i'll trust him if tim ferris puts it on his butt i should put it on my butt <laughs> sign me up i'll subscribe <laughs> to that too i guess oh man i'm not gonna have any money after all these subscriptions yeah damn <laughs> <laughs> i gotta learn more about money i guess you do it's my happiness matt um uh, yeah but i i think uh what are what are some on your side of th- and like what's one that stands out that we might have been circling? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of topics. I don't think we're gonna hit on all of them in this in this episode. But no. you know, another thing that I've started doing is I've started every single Wednesday just throwing like little bits of money into like an index fund, hmm. and that was something that he recommended. He was like, "Yeah, just you know, go to like an index fund that follows the S and P 500. If you look at it historically, yeah. it you know goes up." 10 ish percent a year or whatever it was. And it's a, a pretty safe bet that if you just kind of put some money in there all the time in 20 years, it'll be very valuable due to compound interest. And mm-hmm. the, ideally the market keeps on going up. It'll probably have some dips, but it'll overall go up. Right. And so I've actually started doing that where like every Wednesday I go and throw like little bits of money at the mm-hmm. S and P 500, um, in an index fund. I also, he didn't say this in the book. A pop. Yeah, I mean, I just twenty k here. Just no what I find in my couch cushions, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, um, I've seen, yeah it's just stacks. It's yeah. crazy. Um, <laughs> we got to get a picture of you on a couch with like money coming out from under all the cushions, and you're just laying back. Like, yeah, I have Matt. pictures like that. I mean, that's my couch. That's just my house. But well, have your um, kid take a picture and send yeah, it over next time. <laughs> send it to Jacob. <laughs> um, I, I, I've actually started throwing like little bits of money into like uh, crypto, also yeah, just yeah. kind of like a side thing. So I'm throwing like a certain little percentage of money every week into index fund and a little certain percentage of money every uh, week into like a into a, an account that has some Bitcoin and Ethereum in it. I, nice. I don't mess around with all the altcoins and stuff. We've I've learned lessons there. We've been there. Um, but yeah, so I just, I throw it to Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think those have the highest likelihood of being massively adopted. So um, I, I think that's something that if I, you know, not financial advice or anything, but I do think that crypto is over the long run is going to keep going up and up and up and, and his, people are going to look back at it and go, yeah, it's like the S and P 500 historically, it goes up over time. So mm. put money in it, mm. right? So I kind of feel like it's a, I feel like it's safe, but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> and I think that's another point from the book that is pretty big is that no one knows. Yeah. That's like the point it was making is like, man, there's only what, 200 ish years of financial markets to study. And that's not that long. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's that's that's not that long at all. So who knows? I mean, like, yeah, it probably will be. Yeah, I would say the odds are in the favor that, you know, crypto crypto of some sort is gonna freaking be a big piece of the future for mm-hmm. sure. So I think it's super smart. Yeah. No, uh, I, I wanna get back in doing on the crypto side. I am doing crypto. that. Crypto. Crypto. Yeah. Crypto side. Yeah. Um I think it's smart. It's balanced and in it should be longevity, like in the long term, it should be a consistent play. Mm-hmm. And that's, 
again, just putting points from the book, you know, and, and kind of realizations for me, it's like, it's the long game. Yeah. Just play the long game, but be happy in the now and fund everything that you should be, that you want right now. But mm-hmm. also, like, yeah, run it through your filters. You know, use your little buy, uh, you know, your wish list mechanisms to mm-hmm. <laughs> release the dopamine when it's like, you know, eleven o'clock at night, and you're like, I just watched this really cool drone video, yeah. and now I think I'm going to be a cinema ph- photographer, cinema ph- cinematographer. That's yeah, get it. Get it out. You got it. You got bah. it. Ah, good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, just put it on the wish list. You know, yeah, save it for the morning. Yeah, reassess. Do you still feel like that? cinematographer mm, like that no I no good you just saved yourself like five grand yeah i'm trying to figure out how we got back to that thread i don't know but <laughs> doesn't matter we figured Tom, out how to was somehow. there a place you were trying to go matt no i was Are just talk- i was just talking about <laughs> being a little bit more automated with my investing and throwing money into like uh, consistency index and funds yeah. and yeah in, into crypto and just kind of like having a routine way to make sure i'm investing on a week by week basis so i know there's always a little bit more money going yeah. into that thing and it's going to compound over time so just kind of like making that a little bit more of an automatic thing that just runs in the background it's the best thing yeah long term and it's a system so i like it um anything else no i think we kind of covered a lot i think we covered our biggest ahas that we've discussed yeah um they'll pop up but i think this has been a a book that's found us at a good time mm -hmm. in our career in our lives where we're kind of looking at patterns in our lives and stuff that we just kind of do naturally but also the places we want to go and this book i think uh it it gives you a lot of insights into ways to steer whatever your life is financially but also just whatever and it kind of like shifts the perspectives a bit brings Mm -hmm. some clarity around stuff and gets you thinking deeper so Mm -hmm. check it out psychology of money yeah by morgan housel morgan housel yes i said it right maybe yeah, and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll do our best to try to get him on the show because we want to pick his brain on... Yeah, if, if you know him little. or have desires on our, our know where to find him. Desires. Not <laughs> do you guys have desires? <laughs> desires of uh, <laughs> something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, let us know, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> find us somewhere. Yeah. He, somewhere. I, I actually tweeted at him and he liked the tweet. So Ooh. we're connect- We're like buddies. We're you like are best friends. We're like besties, so we'll get him. We'll have to run that clip and ask him if uh, he thinks the same. Yeah. You guys best friends. Morgan, really? We've never actually met. Do you remember that like, that click? He probably does. He just saw. <laughs> he probably has a team member who's no. like looks for likes on his stuff and or looks for mentions and just likes them. No, on they don't have those. That's not real. It's not real. No, it's always the person. Oh, always, always, the, person. always the person you think it is. Always. Well, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell the truth. All right, so we'll bring him on the show. If you know him, <laughs> hey, we'd love an introduction. That'd be great. Uh, yeah. This is how we get guests on our show now. Yeah, we just ask the audience to introduce us to guests. Hey, we'd make it entertaining, fun mm-hmm. to listen to. Could or watch. Work. Could work. You should go watch us. If you're not watching us, go over to YouTube at hustleandflowchart.tv. Hustleandflowchart.tv. That's We're place. trying to improve it day by day. We are improving it day by day, I'd say. Mm-hmm. We're, we're doing a lot. The Hustle and Flowchart brand. So it's fun. You should go subscribe and like and watch all the videos and increase our watch time and, uh, you know, help us out over there in the YouTube lands. Yeah. Also, on these Tuesday episodes, we like to answer questions from the audience. Uh, We decided not to today because we wanted to talk about this book and not a lot of people submitted questions. So submit your questions Mm. over at hustleandflowchart.com slash ask. Right now, I think it redirects to a Facebook post where you can ask your question on the Facebook post. I actually think I might mix it up. I might make it go to like a type form or something Mm. like that. But we'll see. But either way, if you go to hustleandflowchart.com slash ask, it'll take you to a place where you can ask questions and we'll answer them on our episodes we'll actually answer them we will like, oh like we, we don't just in the last gather a bunch of questions and we're like what do we do with these now? well last time we let an automated robot ask us questions that was fun so that that worked still we'll do that if we have to fill time next time yeah all right well uh what else we have we had the notes so hopefully you found some wisdom here or if it's not our wisdom it just rehearsed yeah. it from morgan we just yeah. rambled about a book that we both read and liked so that's about it so know. if you liked what we said in any form you should go over to flowchartgroup.com and get the notes by entering your email address but being quick because you probably listened to this around the time it came it got live it got released whatever it showed up in your podcast app go do it now so flowchartgroup.com see you there yes
go there. What and else? we've also got a lovely sponsor in Easy Webinar. Dang right we do. Those guys rock. They do. I love them. We do love them. I love them. It's Easy Webinar. Easy Webinar. If you go to easywebinar.com slash hustle, they're hooking you up with a discount for being a hustle and flowchart listener. Easy Webinar. It does all the types of webinars. All of them. Easy even the ones you've never heard of or even would think of. Even the hard webinars. Easy webinar will do hard webinars. You know what? They don't like doing the hard webinars, but if you're a hard webinar kind of person, they'll I mean, do those too. You got to give yourself a break for one, yeah. but they'll take care of you. They, yeah. they welcome you, but they're going to definitely convert you into the easy webinar type of person. Yeah. So right. like easywebinar.com slash hustle. You can actually do uh, automated webinars, live webinars, hybrid webinars, live streams. It creates landing pages. It creates opt-in for it. Dude, so much it money. does so, so much money. Much stuff. Wow. You're you're just gonna be it's like it's just a money machine a money machine <laughs> are we are we telling them that easy webinar is gonna make the money because i don't know if we're allowed oh, to do that are we not allowed to? <laughs> scratch all of that yeah easy webinar this is gonna episode hook you is for f- entertainment purposes only <laughs> <laughs> it's like really cool. i don't know all right so they're hooking you over the fat discount ignore everything i said before this about the money factor you know I can't guarantee anything. No. We can't do that. All right. So, but I can't guarantee they're hooking you up with a fat discount. If you go to, I will guarantee uh-oh. that a lot of people have made money with Easy Webinar. Well, they have proof. They have mm-hmm. testimonials. So, right. if you go to easywebinar.com/slash hustle, that is key. Go to easywebinar.com/slash hustle. I believe there are some testimonials on that page. They so, if believe. you would like to see money proof, it's somewhere on their domain. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed. So go there. They're hooking you up. Go sign up. They rock. You rock. Thank you. Yes. Do that. Easywebinar.com slash hustle. Hey, let us know what you think about the show. If you're liking this thing, we're trying to, we're testing out new stuff. We're, we're testing about, uh, we, we'll get some ideas for the future too. Mm-hmm. Maybe some, uh, you know, game type stuff. Yeah. We're going to test know. some we're interesting styles for podcasting. We're still going to do a lot of interviews. Thursdays are still going to be interviews. Tuesdays, we're going to experiment. We're going to, we're going to just play around a little bit here. This episode yeah. was a little bit of an experiment where we were just kind of like yeah. randomly riffing on a book that we both liked. We, I think it worked. Yeah. I think it what worked, think? but I'm, I'm real time thoughts. I'm serious. I think it worked. I think we got a little bit like uh, tangenty a little uh, sometimes a little too tangenty on some of the topics but um other than that i think i, I like talking about the book i, thought I mean it was i was really thinking about kicking you off the podcast anyway so i'm like yeah eh. no that's fine. no that's mm-hmm. uh yeah no the tangents were fun yeah but yeah the tangents uh they went a little long <laughs> so uh yeah no but I, i'm curious what you guys think do you want to hear us talk about some of our favorite books we're talking about doing some like game elements to the show and there's gonna be a hell of long tangents yeah because you ain't getting rid of me damn it and you yeah i'm the king of tangents though are you now (laughs) matt is too i don't know about that all right it holds it in for you guys though um yeah i think that's everything though if you like this go leave a review we will read reviews on this show sometimes so go do that if you haven't yet we would love to read reviews and big time reviews big time uh ratings that is big stars five at least five five things five minimum five stars yeah that's what we want Yes, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Until next time. See you guys later. Adios. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. Before taking the time to listen, we want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out, all the good stuff from this episode. We actually have a nice, simple notes version that you can find on our website. So go to evergreenprofits.com, find this episode that you just listened to, and uh, give us your email address, and we'll send you the notes. Thanks for listening. Go get it. Wiki wiki.